Hi there, I am Black Maze. Thank you very much for watching the very first game review on the channel. If you do like it, give us a subscribe and you will uh, be able to expect more of these and other cool stuff. We're taking a look at Space Engineers. Space Engineers has been out for a while now, currently available for purchase on Steam for a good price. I think it's around 15 euros or dollars and uh, it's currently in alpha stage, but uh, very, very much worth your money. Now, in case you're not familiar with Space Engineers, Space Engineers is a free roaming space game that features the Newtonian physics, which is, in my opinion, a must when playing a space game. Space Engineers is a survival type game. It's very much like, uh, I, I, I think it's safe to say that the intention of the game's playstyle would be close to Minecraft. Um, it's very simple, very very similar as well, where you work to gather resources with the intention to build stuff like space stations and ships and mining equipment to gather more resources and build an empire, something like that. Currently there's only the creative uh, type of game style available. There's no survival. You can gather resources, but there is no point to it at the moment. Um, but yeah, all there's, there's so many features being introduced. There's uh, game updates every week, and stuff is changing very, very frequently. So obviously that's uh, to be expected. So let's take a quick look here at the uh, menu. We're currently in the main menu screen. Um, Space engineers can run on quite a simple PC. However, it's very much dependent on the amount of objects in the game so when you have a lot of stuff spawned it tends to get a bit more demanding. There's a couple of very simple uh, options in here. Control hints, rotation hints for placing objects, head bob, uh, player names, all that sort of stuff. Video settings are quite simple at this moment. Uh, resolution, vertical sync, uh, and then render quality, which uh, I've got set to normal and feel of view, which is nice. Audio, very simple. And uh, the controls obviously leave for customization, which is nice. I'm currently set to the default. I haven't found any need to change anything, so that's all good. I would suggest we start a new game here, uh, which gives us a couple of options. We'll start a custom world, give it a name. Black Maze, Space Engineers. You can uh, play this in a couple of different modes, offline, which is basically just on your own, or a private online server, uh, a server where only your Steam friends can join, or a public one where everyone can join. Now we'll just start an offline one for now, and you can set the amount of objects in the game, the maximum amount of objects. Uh, and then there's a couple of different scenarios, which basically just mean the initial start of the game. What does it look like? Now we'll just do easy start one, which uh, demonstrates a couple of basic ships, etc. You can disable or enable the copy paste feature, which is a very handy little feature that lets you copy and paste the ships that you currently have in your game. And we'll show you this later on. Auto save, which we'll turn off for, for now. Uh, weapons, very important. And player names. Let's just start the game here. Yeah, and it's very cool how you always get a little, uh, yeah, a little quote on your loading screen. Yeah, the game often quotes the Newtonian laws, and it's a good moment to add uh, or to comment that the loading time uh, very much depends on the amount of objects in your game, as well as your game's, uh, your system specifications. So here we are currently in Space Engineers. And I remember the first time I started this game, I've got quite a couple of hours into Space Engineers now. I was overwhelmed with the detail in the game. And uh, we're currently looking at this red big ship here. This is a big ship. And this is all handmade. You can change anything on these ships. Currently flying with a jetpack, 
You'll see a smaller ship here. Ship here. Very cool, right? So I'll just uh, give you a little overview of what all this is because you know it's it's easy to get overwhelmed with these things. There's so many different things to look at. Um, let's start at the basics here. The heads-up display. You'll see in the left bottom corner some uh, yeah some some facts on your character. Currently flying, the health, jetpacks are on, dampeners, which is to uh, give you an easier control mode uh, for the Newtonian uh, uh, physics. Obviously, if you with the dampeners on you can you can stay steady if you turn them off you'll keep floating away unless you stop yourself you can turn on lights show you that real quick no, it's easy it's a bit hard to see there your speed and your energy in the middle your uh, currently set up items so you can place these and gravity in the right bottom if I turn off the jetpack right now you'll see will fall to the ground as there is a gravity generator set on this platform here. So pressing G open up a cool little menu here with some basic tools, all the different objects that you can place. Now we'll take a closer look at these in a little bit. And uh, Space Engineers knows three different type of ships if you'd call it. A small one, a large one or a station. Now important to note is that when you play as a station this will never ever move a small or a large ship obviously will so I think it would be cool to uh, just show you these different objects I'm gonna just place a new station and you'll see that we have just spawned a very simple little cube now I can nudge this and nothing happens it's immobile and the Newtonian laws do not apply to this object. And this is so that you can make sure that your stations, stations like this platform here is a station, will never move. And we can expand this very easily. And you'll see this works exactly like you would expect from a game like Minecraft. There's a few different modes like this that you can place objects with to play as a line, or perhaps you want to play as a face or a surface like so there you go you have a little platform here there's different colors as you can see in this little menu here you can set any type any color that you're that you're looking for and then you can paint in different modes as well to paint bigger areas or smaller areas like so so that's a, spa a sta space station. And obviously this can be used to maybe land ships or make a hangar or any type of base. The possibilities are as big and as wide as your imagination. So let's quickly start a small ship before we go into all the objects. Now you'll see another little cube here. This one is a lot smaller. And if I nudge it, you will see that it begins to fly away. And it will not stop because there's no forces acting upon it. It's gonna just continue to float off. So I'll quickly spawn a new one, which is immobile. And as you can see, this one will allow the same type of editing in any color that you want. Now this object is a space uh, ship, and a spaceship needs a cockpit. And this is the small ship cockpit in the game. This is currently the only one, and I certainly hope they'll be adding more later on, which I do expect. This is not really a fighter type cockpit. This is more of a cargo or civilian transport type cockpit, or any type of transport cockpit really. Now. To make this ship actually a ship, obviously you need some power, you need some stuff to keep it in place like thrusters and uh, a gyroscope to actually make the ship turn. So I suggest we quickly take the uh, reactor here. This is a small reactor which basically provides the ship with power. There we go. The ship now has power. Anything connected to this object here will 
uh, benefit from the properties of this object. Now I have on my number 5 key here I have set up the gyroscope and you can place this anywhere you want. I'll just place it behind here and that will make sure that the ship actually knows which is left, which is right, up and down and you can actually uh, keep the ship from floating away. But currently it doesn't have any thrusters so it's going to float away if I nudge it. So this is a thruster here as you can see and what is cool about this you can obviously point them any direction you want and you do this with insert delete home end page up and page down you can rotate in any direction now obviously we would need thrusters to point every way but let's quickly make this look a little bit more like a spaceship and this may be a good moment to show you the symmetrical mode as you can see you can um, make an object work in a symmetrical mode like I have just done and you'll see that any item I place will also appear on the other side and that gives us the easy way to make something look the same on every side. I've just added two more reactors and I'm gonna just open up the inventory here to show you some other blocks. We've got slanted blocks, little corners, slanted bits and these below are camouflaged, camouflaged um, parts which have more armor. They're simply heavy armor. The other blocks that you're seeing are for big, sh big ships and I'll or large ships, I should say, and I'll show you these later on. So I'm just going to place these on here, make this look a little pretty. Now obviously this, this ship is gonna look a little crappy, but that's mostly due to my in inability to make something cool. Now to fill this up, you have this little thing here. And I remember first playing this and just feeling so in control because of these little little spaces that you can fill up. I remember that in a game like Minecraft it's a bit more frustrating when you try and make something with a cool shape to it. Alright let's go and add some thrusters here. I've got two type of thrusters, the small and the large one and I'll show you both. First let's put up a big one and you can see this one is quite big. I'm just going to fill this gap and give yourself some some thrust, some rear thrust. Now, and you'll see this is significantly bigger than the small one. Now we also need some thrust. We need uh, thrusters in all directions to keep ourselves from floating away, and obviously to make sure that we can turn every way. So let's do this. See, I have just nudged my ship. Oh, not hard enough, apparently. It's still steady, which is good. And obviously, because I just placed this thruster, it's also appearing on the other side. And again, don't mind the shitty look of this ship, please, because I have found it to take quite some time to come up with something that actually looks cool. But trust me, it is most certainly possible. There, uh, obviously, this this game uses the uh, the ability of the Steam Workshop, and people are sharing loads of really cool content, which is far superior than my shitty skills here. All right, any ship that wants to stop itself needs a thruster pointing backwards or forwards. I should say. So we should find ourselves a place. I'll just place mine there for now. So now it can actually stop itself. It can go left and right, forward and backwards, but currently it has no up and down thrust. So let's add these. There we go. That's down. And now we need up. Oh, I just accidentally removed my side thrusters. There we go. So now we have a ship 
that has all of the objects it needs to fly. So as you can see, it's highlighting yellow, which means it's um, interactable. Pressing T puts me in the cockpit. And you'll see some new stuff on the uh, heads-up display here. The right corner shows the mass, which is currently 3,777 kilograms. The speed, the power usage, which will help you determine how many reactors or how much energy you need to actually make sure you can operate all your systems. Seven thrusters, dampeners, everything is there. Currently one gyroscope, which will make this ship turn a little stiff. Fuel time, this is something that they've added recently. This is obviously to go, currently there, there is no fuel, right? You can't even die in this game. And that's all because it's alpha and it's more about functionality, making everything work the right way. Uh, and obviously it's not about gameplay as much. So if I press V, you will see outside view and you can currently just sim very simply pan around your ship. You can do the same inside your cockpit, which is really cool. It shows your own inanimate character and you can see the blocks which I've placed above my head it's all there which is nice it's it's really cool if I would for example give myself a long little nose there with some strange blocks on the side you will be able to see them from inside your ship now here is a small the, the, the controls are very simple it's just your mouse to turn left right up and down Q and E to roll, which is very slow due to the lack of gyroscopes. W for forward, release for stop, S for reverse, A and D for sideways. And I don't know if this is standard C for down and space for up. I think this was this this was default as well. You can turn off the dampeners and then the ship turns into how I love my ships, Z turns off the inertia dampeners. If I press W now, it's not gonna stop when I release and I can turn my ship and it'll keep going that way. Now let me quickly stop the ship before we hit into the big ship. So this is cool because I can press space and W now to quickly pan around in 100% free floating mode like you would expect from any object in space. This is cool, yeah? And I'm pressing Z, enables the dampeners and stops your ship. Voila. Let's add some weapons real quick. I want to show you the weapons. There's two weapons, a Gatling, uh, Gatling gun and a rocket launcher. Currently, they do not use ammo or anything, but they are sick. Cool thing to note is if you would place your weapon too low or too high, shooting will have an effect on your ship in, in uh, the matter of recoil and it is best to keep your weapons in the middle of your ship. Let's quickly add these there and you'll be able to see them on the side. We can put that up on the toolbar and shoot. As you can see there's a recoil making me move backwards actually. I'll try and show you that. So let's try rocket launchers. And we need to select them. And this is nice. This is so cool. I mean, this is this is a dream come true for for so many people. I mean, look at that. I just created a hole. Every single block has its own damage model, right? It can be destroyed, torn off, and this is what makes this game so cool because this makes it so important how you build your ship. Where do you place your reactors? Where are your gyroscopes? Where are your weapons? And more importantly, where is your cockpit? Is it is it is it penetratable or is it well penetrable or is it you know hidden so it can't be hit? Very important stuff to think about. I mean, I'll quickly crash into this little thing here and you will see that I just got thrown out my ship. There goes the ship. The cockpit broke off, which means I would have died, but there is no death in this game yet. And you'll see that the reactors or the thrusters or something has come off the ship, which makes it... Yeah, the, the reactors have actually th torn off, so it's got no power. 
So it's just going to keep floating away forever. Let's take a look at the big ship here with the, the hole in the in the bottom and in the side apparently. Look at that. Now, uh, small ships, you can't put any gra uh, gravity generators on them. The big ships, you can. And the gravity generators are adjustable since uh, recently. I'll show you that later on. Let's quickly find the cockpit in this ship, if we can actually get through. There we go. This is the large ship cockpit, which is a console. There's no first person view, so going in the ship, <coughs> excuse me, puts you in third person view. You can scroll to zoom in and out, and it'll throw you around the ship. Note the gears, the landing gears on the bottom. You have them for the small ships as well. I like to control the, the big ships with the keyboard as opposed to the mouse, which is basically just the arrow buttons. Space to go up, so let's do that. Just move ourselves away from this platform. Just slightly go to the side. And up. And steady. Now, this is what the keys does. I'm currently pressing the left key. The left arrow key, I should say. And that makes me turn to the side. No, this is the mouse. On these ships, you, it takes a lot of move in the, the mouse uh, to actually move somewhere. So that's why the arrow buttons are more convenient. Now let's, let's show you what everyone is excited for, right? Crashing. I'm going to crash this thing into an asteroid. Because yes, there are asteroids in this game. And crashing into them is a problem. Let's position ourselves real quick. And you'll love this, right? This is this is nice. There we go. I'm turning off the dampeners, so there's no th no no systems that will try and keep me on course when we hit. It takes a while to speed up. This thing weighs two million kilograms. Here we go. And this actually freezes my computer for a second as it calculates what damage occurs where. Let's take a look at the damage. Oh, my dampeners were turned off, so I kept floating away there as I ex exited the uh, gravity well. Here we are. Part of the front was completely eaten up by the asteroid. But the rest of the ship is still quite intact, as you can see. Now, I want to show you some cool stuff in regards to the landing gear. So I'm just going to quickly fly myself back to the uh, spawn area. And I should mention, currently in the alpha state of this game, um, asteroids are only spawned at the spawn of the uh, of the level. So there's, if you go out, there is nothing that generates. So these are small ships. Um, and you can see they have a landing light or a light on the front. These lights are laggy if you don't have a very good computer. So I tend to take them off if I don't need them. This is frowned upon by a lot of people. Um, and you'll find that going into an online game often leads you to a lot of lag if you don't have a computer that can handle the game. So this is this this obviously moves a lot faster as you can see. That's because it's got four gyroscopes instead of the one that I had on my little ship. It has Gatling guns and rockets. So what I wanted to show you, apart from that little weapons demonstration there, is the landing gear. I really, really like this um, um, this this little ability, this little function. 
I'm just looking for the other ship that's around here somewhere. There it is. This is a ship that, uh, it's like a, a cargo type ship. All right, so this one actually has places to land on, as you can see here. Now, I'm just turning off the dampeners so I can steady myself in real gently. I like to take it slow as you would in real space. Turn on the dampeners where I want to stop, like so. And now this is cool. In the right corner, you can see landing gears three in proximity zero. If I go down, it will say in proximity one, two, and three. That means that the landing gears are actually in proximity of somewhere it can connect to. Because you can imagine, if I would exit this ship right now and fly off in the big ship, this little ship here will throw itself against every single wall and destroy the inside and itself. And that's why you have landing gear. So if I just gently twitch myself down here, you will see that they all turn yellow. Yellow means in proximity. And pressing P locks them in, pl in place. So now the ship is parked. I can turn off the engines. And we have a locked ship. Now we'll just quickly fly this ship and demonstrate the connected ship here. These are doors. Obviously you're, you're seeing a lot of objects that you haven't I haven't shown you yet and I will do in, the, in, a, in a small moment. But these are basically interior ship objects that you don't have on the small ships, only on the big ships. Here's the cockpit and you can see we're currently controlling this ship here. And there you have the small ship currently in the screen. Now, if I move myself, you will see that the big ship stays in place. Sometimes sparks fly off, but this is just a bit of bugginess that uh, hasn't been taken out of the game yet. Which is fine. Again, it's it's all alpha, right? It's, it's far from done. I mean, there isn't a lot of purpose to gameplay yet. The only purpose you have, and yes, I like crashing things. However, my computer doesn't... Wow! <laughs> uh, there's not a lot of purpose to the gameplay yet. The only thing that you can do is build. Here you can see sparks flying off as something is colliding. There. And this is just the whole ship eaten alive. I'll quickly show you the mining that you have. You have a hand drill that you can use to drill into and it actually changes the shape of the asteroid and you can see here that there's actually objects coming off stone you can gather these and obviously there's different type of asteroids with different in internals diamond or whatever and you can place these in refineries to refine these into goods that you can use in your assembler to make items that you can use on building a ship or a station. So there isn't a lot known yet in relation in, in regard to the gameplay, right? Where do they want to take this? We've recently learned that we're not getting any type of AI in the game, which is a disappointment to some, including myself. I'd like to see some sort of AI, however, you know, it all depends on where this game is going to go. If it's just going to be online with others in, in, in an open world, uh, mass, a massive type of game, it might not be that necessary. However, if it's going to have some sort of uh, single player mode, you would expect some sort of AI in there. Anyway, here is the assembler. Now, we don't need that just yet. This is the refinery. We can just interact with this here. And you'll see we have some stones here and some other stuff that I haven't. Like here's magnesium ore. We can throw that in there. And I think it's supposed to do something. However, I haven't fiddled around with this enough to know what to do. But that's fine. Obviously, what this does is you can 
refine your stuff in stuff you can use to assemble and then you can make lots of really cool stuff currently you can you can build your ship in creative mode and it'll just appear now in the end what, what you can see there's another level that you can start and you see it in the background videos in this game um, what I think will happen is that you build your ship, you design your ship in some sort of creative mode in a, yeah, like a creator, like an editor and then when you go into building it you actually spawn the wireframe and you use the welder to construct it however this object doesn't work yet it gives you the message this tool weapon is disabled so you can't use that yet and this, ladies and gentlemen, is Space Engineers. It's an amazing game that features so many things. It's, it's, it's simply uh, amazing the things you can do with it. It's simply amazing. It's got great potential. However, yeah, we have to see and learn where this game is going to go. I like how it's very simula simulation-like. Uh, I'd like to see more controls since you are working with Newtonian graph, uh, physics, it would be nice to see some more controls like how many power do you want to give to your thrusters. Um, it would be nice to see yeah, some more detail into that. Currently, if you have a gravity generator set up like this one, it affects me. I have gravity. However, ships do not. As you can see here, this is actually a small ship connected to a landing gear. I will quickly turn that off and you'll see that even though this is in a gravity well like myself it floats and if I push it real gentle there is no gravity acting upon this there is on stone but not on ships and it would be nice to see this implemented I'd like to see more cockpits and you know like fighter type cockpits but I'm I'm all I'm expecting this to come but just a little later currently there is obviously the ability to turn off the dampeners which means if I release I just keep going as you can see now however moving the mouse doesn't float it should keep floating it shouldn't stop itself it does the same in a ship it stops but it shouldn't these are all small things that can be worked on there's a quick look of the character. I haven't shown you this just yet. You can see the boosters on the back. Quick look at the gun. He's holding it a bit funny. Looks like some kind of G36 type weapon. As you can see, it's a bit funny still. Another thing that's had a lot of debate and a lot of discussion, especially on the forums and Reddit, is the fact that you have, have sound in space. I know that uh, a lot of people are saying that they're working on different levels of immersion into realism, um, which basically means that you have uh, the mode that we're currently in with loads of sound, and then you get the more realistic modes where you don't have sound or just muffled sounds from inside your helmet, which is nice. So you have uh, something for everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed this little review here on Space Engineers. Um, the way I'm setting up this channel is very simple. If you like the game, like the videos, the more likes and the more chance of me doing a playthrough on this. Um, especially on, on games like this, I'll be focusing on building stuff on other games that have more storyline. Uh, it would mean that I would play through the game uh, and take you along for the ride. So, yeah, again... If you like the videos, if you like the game, like it and uh, that will show me that you're interested in seeing more. Thanks for watching. 
please do subscribe if you're interested in seeing more of this channel as well. It would be uh, much appreciated. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you.